Hello everyone, this is Junaid here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about one of the most powerful language model that is GPT-3. So without any further delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start off this session by speaking about what is language model and why do we need it, followed by an introduction to GPT-3 model. Moving ahead, we shall see how this model is being implemented to enhance the existing technologies. After this, we shall see what did it take to create the state-of-the-art model followed by its limitations. Finally, we'll end this session by discussing how we can implement GPT-3 language model. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on training technologies. And also, if you're looking for online training certification on deep learning, check out the link given in the description box below. So, what is a language model? A language model is a probability distribution over a sequence of words. Given such a sequence, say a length m, it assigns a probability to the whole sequence. The language model provides context to distinguish between words and phrases that sound similar. Language modeling is used in many tasks such as speech recognition, machine translation, part of speech tagging, parsing, optical character recognition, handwriting recognition, information retrieval and on many other applications. Some of the examples of the state-of-the-art language models are Google's BERT, Transformer Network, GPT-3, and few other more. Speaking about GPT-3, GPT-3 has made some headlines in the last summer because it can perform wide variety of natural language tasks and produce human-like text. The tasks that GPT-3 perform include text classification, which is nothing but sentiment analysis, question answering, text generation, text summarization, name entity recognition, and language translation. Although these tasks are not limited. Based on the task that GPT-3 can perform, we can think of it as a model that can perform reading comprehension and writing tasks at a near human level expertise. And what makes this better is that GPT-3 is so powerful, entire startup can be created with GPT-3 because we can think of it as a general purpose Swiss Army knife for solving wide variety of problems in natural language processing. So what is this GPT-3 model? Well, GPT-3, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3, is a language model that was created by OpenAI, an artificial resource laboratory in San Francisco. The 175 billion parameter deep learning model is capable of producing human-like text and was trained on large text dataset with hundreds or billions of words. So moving ahead, let us now see how GPT-3 algorithm is being implemented. So using GPT-3 with JavaScript API, you see Antonio Gomez, a senior engineer at Apple, used GPT-3 to produce generative code snippets of JavaScript API by textually describing the element and their parameter needed to create WebGL 3D scene. As you can see here, just by creating the description, a code is getting generated. So moving ahead to the next application that is layout generation. You see, Sharif Shamim has used GPT-3 to generate code that represents a layout. And all he had to do was write a couple of samples to give the context to the GPT-3. According to him, if he wanted to write output in a plain HTML or CSS instead of JSX, all he would have to do was to rewrite two initial samples to HTML or CSS. Then GPT-3 output would be in a plain HTML and CSS. So the next application of GPT-3 model, you can say resume generation. You see, using GPT-3, one just have to enter where they have worked and what they have worked on and the GPT-3 API dishes out a decent resume. Then we have text compilation. Carlos, a machine learning practitioner, made GPT-3 perform text completion and combination of style rewriting. The style ranges from chickbit to neurotic to legalese. You can say this is something similar to Grammarly, but more powerful. So the next one is creating a search engine out of GPT-3 model. You see, Paras Chopra, the founder of Wingify, used GPT-3 to create a search engine which was known as ask me anything. For any arbitrary query, that is any input, it returned the exact answer and the corresponding URL. As you can see over here in the small demo, as you provide the query, it gives you an exact answer and the link for it. Another application, which I would say is a bit funny, is nothing but meme creation. You see, Mirinal Mohit, a ML practitioner, used GPT-3 to generate memes that are contextual and in touch with the latest trends. So now that you saw how this model is being applied, and honestly, these applications were just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure now you might be wondering, what did it take to train this model? The first thing is, as you see here, GPT-3 is overwhelmed with sheer size of its trainable parameter, which is 10 times more than any previous model out there. 
In general, more parameter a model has, more data is required to train the model. As per the creators of GPT-3 model, GPT-3 has been trained on about 45 terabytes of text data from multiple sources, which includes Wikipedia and books. So the multiple data sets used to train the model are shown here. First off, we have common crawler. You see the common crawl corpus contains petabytes of data collected over eight years of web crawling. The corpus contains raw web pages of data, metadata, extracts and text extract with a light filtering. Then we have web text 2. Web text 2 is a text of web pages from all outbound red links from post with 3 plus upwards. Then we have book 1 and book 2. Book 1 and book 2 are internet based book corpora. Finally, we have Wikipedia pages in the English language, which is also part of our training corpus. The third column in the table, as you can see here, weight in training matrix refers to the fraction of examples during training that were digged from the data set. A major issue in training a model and in particular such a large training model with so much of data from internet is that these models have the capability to memorize the content and then contaminate downstream tasks like testing as they might have already seen the data. A clear example of model overfitting. Though the creators of GPT-3 have took some measures to avoid the training and test data overlap, but a bug in filtering caused the data to leak. As mentioned in the paper, the team could not retain the model due to a high cost associated with the training. With this algorithm, mighty and all, it comes with its own set of limitations. The creators of GPT-3 themselves accept that model has its own set of weakness and does common silly mistakes. In particular, it does not perform well on a text synthesis task like repetitions, contradictions, coherence, loss over a long passage, etc. However, this is not too different from other language models. The architecture also introduced a fundamental limitation on the model. The GPT-3 model is the auto-regressive language model and not a bidirection one like BERT. So GPT-3 model is more suited for tasks which is non-contextual learning based and not the ones which is dependent on fine-tuning. Some of the limitations of GPT-3 can be GPT-3 lacks long-term storage memory. The model does not learn anything from long-term interaction with humans. Then it's lack of interpretability. This is a problem that affects extremely large and complexity in general. GPT-3 is so large that it is difficult to interpret or explain the output that it processes. Limited input size. You see, transformer networks have a fixed maximum input size. And this means that prompts from the GPT-3 can deal with no longer than few sentences to a word. Finally, slow interface time. This is because GPT-3 is so large that it takes more time for the model to produce predictions. GPT-3 surfaces from bias. All models are only as good as the data that was used in training them. And GPT-3 is no different. So finally coming down to a million dollar question, how can I get my hands on on this algorithm? Guys, to our disappointment, as of this day, GPT-3 is not an open source. And OpenAI has decided to make this model available through a commercial API that you can find. The API is a private beta, which means that you'll have to fill out the OpenAI waitlist form to join the waitlist of users to use this in future. OpenAI has a special program for academic researchers who want to use GPT-3. If you want to use GPT-3 for academic research, you should fill out the academic access application. While GPT-3 is not open source or publicly available, its predecessor GPT-2 is open source and accessible to Hugging Faces Transformer Library. Feel free to check out the documentation of Hugging Faces GPT-3 implementation if you want to use it for smaller yet powerful language model instead. Alright guys, with this we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any further queries, please do mention them in the comment box below. Until next time, goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!